Welcome to the Morning Meditation Podcast. The title of this morning's meditation is Pardon Me While I Stop and Praise the Lord. 1 Timothy 1.17 Now unto the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. First of all, Paul had just given a testimony of what grace had done for him in verses 14 through 16. He had just said in verse 15, This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. Paul saw himself as the chiefest of sinners. This means the number one sinner. This is a present tense, I am. The emphasis is on I because the personal pronoun is used. The verb does not need the personal pronoun to say I am. This is a strong testimony of Paul pointing a finger at himself as he says, I am the chief of sinners. Then he gives the reason why God saved the chief of sinners. Verse 16 says, How be it for this cause I obtained mercy that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which your which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. Paul says God did this for him that he might demonstrate his long suffering and set forth a pattern or a model for those who should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. Someone says, I have gone too far. God would not save me. Paul's answer is that God already saved the chief. Therefore, you are no problem for him. Now, after Paul had gotten that out in the open and written it down by inspiration of God, I think he must have said, pardon me while I stop and praise the Lord. I have to do that myself every once in a while. Just stop in the middle of it all and have a little private camp meeting spell and then come back down to my computer or reading the word and say, now, where was I? The words now under the king is defined by strong leader of the people, prince, commander, lord of the land, king. Some people have a problem believing that Jesus is king. I understand that he is not on David's throne, ruling in his millennial kingdom. But what do you do with a statement like this? Paul said, now unto the king. I believe he knew what he was talking about, don't you? I learned an important lesson from a preacher a long time ago. He is now in heaven. He would say, don't put your finger on a verse or a word in a verse and say, That doesn't mean what it says. The verse says, now. The word eternal means forever, an unbroken age, perpetuity of time, eternity. Some translate it king of the ages. It means forever and ever. This is speaking of the eternity of God. When you think of an age, you think of a beginning and an end. This, so this word cannot mean this. God possesses endless being of unlimited sense of the word. God never had a beginning and will never have an end. One of the best ways for me to understand this concept is to think of an, of an eternal now totally separated from time as we know it. Time is something that God created and marked off for the purpose of working out his plan of which we are part. Tozer says, when time words occur in the scripture, they refer to our time, not to his. He says when when uh, commenting on the eternity of God, that God appears at time's beginning is not too difficult to comprehend, but that he appears at the beginning and the end of time simultaneously is not so easy to grasp. Yet, it is true, copied from the Knowledge of the Holy by A.W. Tozer, page 40. That will give you an, it, an itch where you can't get it to scratch it. 
I hate to leave you there, but that's as far as I've ever gotten with that. In the midst of that thought, I find myself in space with the astronauts begging for a safe reentry. The word immortal means uncorrupted, not liable, not liable to cor- to corruption or decay, imperishable. All these words describe mortality. I've just read an interesting book by a respected Bible scholar where our body replaces every cell every seven years. I have known that for years. That is a scientific fact. What they don't explain is why I'm only over seven years old. Well, that is not the only thing that is true, yet unexplainable. Everything we know in this world is getting old, and it's a process of decay. It's corruptible. This means it is mortal. Well, Paul just put an I'm on the front of mortal and says this describes God. God is not older. He's not even old. Neither is Jesus. Hebrews 13.8 says, Jesus Christ is same yesterday, today, and forever. Malachi 3 6 says, For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Hebrews 1 12 says, As and as the vesture shalt thou fold them up, and they shall be changed, but thou art the same, and thy years fail not. God does not age, there is no decay. This makes him so different from us and the creation. That we can do when we are introduced to the concept is bow and worship. The word invisible means unseen or that which cannot be seen. Invisible. Jesus said God is a spirit and they that, must, they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. John 4.24 Paul says of Jesus, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, Hebrews 1 3. God is unseen because he is spirit. The perfect representation of his invisible being is Jesus. Jesus is called the express image of the person. That means if God, spirit, representation could be seen, he would look exactly like Jesus. Because Jesus is his exact likeness. Therefore, God is known by faith. He is beyond sight and all the physical senses. Hebrews 11.27 says, By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. God is, and the way we know the God who is, is faith. The God who is invisible was known and experienced by Paul and the extent that he had to stop in the middle of the chapter after he had given personal testimony of his salvation by grace and praise him who alone is God. Then Paul says, the only wise God. The word only means alone, without companion, forsaken, destitute of help alone, God is totally alone in the matter of wisdom. There is no other God. Satan is the God of this world, 2 Corinthians 4, 3-4. But this is the only in a relative sense, Isaiah forty five twenty two. Look unto me, and be ye saved, all the ends of the earth, for I am God, and there is none else. Isaiah 46, 9, remember the former things of old. For I am God, and there is none else. I am God, and there is none like me. Then he concludes with, Be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. The word honor means to place a proper value upon. The word glory is that in anything that solicits or calls for praise. The word forever and ever means that this is not an hour-long service. We're going to be dismissed. There will be no benediction. In Paul's heart, this is an eternal doxology. And what he is doing now will not change with the ending of time. This has been a good one for me. I hope God can 
use it to encourage you too. May the Lord bless these words to our hearts today.